It changes you when you travel to so many different countries. Here in the industrialized world, we often talk rather carelessly about nature conservation in developing countries, but we are not aware how complex this topic really is, how important the forest is for the people on the spot, to what extent their lives depend on it completely. So I want to create incentives so that people act in a more environmentally friendly way. I've spent a lot of time working on payments for ecosystem services. The idea is that the people whose behavior helps to protect the environment are given an incentive. For example, land users who already live somewhere in Brazil and decide not to cut down the forest, but to leave it intact on their own land or use it more sustainably, that they then get paid for doing so. Stephanie Engel is an environmental economist. She works on a hot topic, the global depletion of our natural resources. How can we solve environmental conflicts locally and influence human behavior to produce the best possible outcome for society and the environment? In order to answer this question, Engel tests microeconomic hypotheses at ETH Zurich, collecting data and conducting field research. In addition to environmental economics, Professor Engel also teaches environmental politics. One focus of her work is to scrutinize environmental policies. We often analyze how various political tools work and which potential formats are more effective than others. This generates policy recommendations for a concrete context. The need for action is particularly great in developing countries, where deforestation and overuse of the forests is a serious problem. Professor Engel has investigated how players with different interests can collaborate to make the forests more sustainable. A famous example of payments for ecosystem services is the rainforests of Costa Rica. Here there is a fund which is used to pay landowners for protecting the forest instead of clearing it. But is this program really effective? You actually achieve more when you focus on specific areas. So we developed a practical tool and showed that in the case of Costa Rica, you could practically double the ecosystem services that you get from protecting the forest by linking them with the specific conditions in individual tracts of the forest. Other countries are also interested in introducing such effective, cost-efficient payment programs. One of Stephanie Engel's collaborators has just returned from Brazil, where he collected the first data from land users by means of a very special experiment. I've now completed a pre-testing in Brazil and would like to see whether the approaches coincide with expectations. Instead of completing a questionnaire, the data is gathered on a tablet using a computer game. Various payment formats can be tested in the context of the game. And the test persons can fell trees, breed cattle, or restore the forest. They are immediately presented with a success or failure of their activities. And in the end, pursuing profit does not benefit anyone, neither nature nor people. The game incorporates factors such as the consequences of rearing too much livestock on one piece of land without doing it sustainably. That means that the land degrades and livestock breeding becomes impossible. But when you go about it more sustainably, by using rotating grazing areas, for example, you can do it for much longer, and this is also shown in the game. What's special about our research is that we actually transfer the lab to the field. Many experiments are conducted with students in Switzerland, Germany or the US, for example, and it's not necessarily clear whether the behavior they show is really typical for landowners and land users in developing countries. 
conflicts of interest over use of natural resources occur in Europe too. For example, in Switzerland with regard to water management. Lake Greifen is a popular local recreation area. Conservationists, sports people and farmers all compete for use of this biotope. Here, payments for ecosystem services could reduce the pressure on the ecosystem. Lake Greifen is an excellent example of scarce resources and the conflicts of interest that ensue. Depending on the kind of farming practices that are in use, they impact wildlife conservation here. One could introduce incentives into the structure of agricultural subsidies so that farming in the area becomes more environmentally friendly and thus causes less water pollution. Stefanie Engel wants to apply her international expertise to even more regional themes. At Osnabrück University, she will have plenty of opportunity to do so. As part of her Alexander von Humboldt professorship, she wants to discover the best way of combining monetary incentives with personal motivation. In my future research, I would like to focus even more on how we can apply the insights we've gained from behavioral economics and psychology to environmental economics and to the development of environmental policy tools. Designing these political tools, which incorporate insights from psychology, that's what will really drive me in my future work as a Humboldt professor.